Estuaries are important habitats that can be found wherever freshwater and saltwater meet and mix. In a coastal city like Vancouver, they're all around us. You may have visited one and not even known it. Estuaries can look different, but they all possess a vibrancy and productive nature that is of incredible importance to fish and wildlife. Estuaries form critical spawning and rearing habitats for many aquatic species, such as salmon. They also act as a filter. There are many aquatic and intertidal plants cleaning the river water as it enters the ocean. Their absorbent nature means they can act as a buffer against sudden changes in water level, thus mitigating flooding. The richness and productivity of estuaries also makes them a valuable carbon sink and a coveted stopover for hungry travelers like osprey, bald eagles, and orca. Estuaries are loved by humans for their recreational value. Their nature makes them ideal for bird watching and angling, but many also take pleasure swimming or rowing their waters. Irrespective of how they are used, the sheer beauty of estuaries can be a boon on mental health, and they are an invaluable teaching and research tool for those learning about the natural world. Traditionally, estuaries were important marine transportation corridors for goods and passengers, and this remains true today. McKay Creek has lost 90% of its estuary to urban sprawl. In fact, countless streams and estuaries across the Lower Mainland have been entirely lost paved over and forgotten. Those that remain have been greatly impacted by industrialization, from historic logging activity, impervious surfaces that redirect contaminated water, and the development of adjacent land that was once productive natural habitat. Invasive species pose a significant threat to riparian areas. The minimal habitat that remained at McKay was being overwhelmed by Japanese knotweed, English ivy, and Himalayan blackberry, to name only a few. McKay Creek is just a sliver of habitat surrounded on all sides by industry and often impacted by oil spills. Even native fauna such as the beaver have impacted the creek, damaging many large trees throughout. Starting in 2013, restoration efforts began in the South Estuary component, moving upstream from there. Planning and research begun in 2012 to explore how to help McKay Creek. The site was chiefly bare, with little or no complexity or vegetation, and the water flow was restricted by a concrete weir. Removal of the weir was a critical step in restoring the creek, as it prevented salmon from gaining access to the upstream areas. The habitat was improved by adding boulders, large root wads, and a substrate for intertidal grasses. Following the removal of dominating invasive species, the area was replanted with native vegetation suited for the location. Seven years following these efforts, the estuary is a thriving home to a variety of birds, fish, plants, and insects that have taken up residency in this now flourishing urban stream. In 2015-2016, work moved upstream to the riparian component above the estuary. This area was absolutely overwhelmed by invasive species. Clematis and ivy vines strangled and choked at towering cottonwood trees. A two-meter tall blanket of Himalayan blackberries suppressed nearly the entire site, dominating the ecosystem and obscuring decades worth of discarded refuse, which would later be removed. Bark mulch was blown in to help in the suppression of weeds, but also to provide a nutrient-rich soil cover following such a harrowing removal of vegetation. The now bare forest floor would become occupied by an army of native plants, armored against the mischievous teeth of resident beaver. As of today, we see a forest thriving, with large, well-established trees and shrubs free from the tyranny of invasive plants. In 2016-2017, following the success downstream, restoration efforts crossed the street to where new challenges lie. A small auxiliary forest path would be decommissioned here, the creeping invasives along it eliminated, and the ground relinquished back to the forest.
astonishing volumes of invasive debris cut, piled, and hefted away to make room for a new generation of native flora. And of course, a few more homes for returning birds wouldn't go amiss. Reaching ever upstream, work continued along the creek, past the decommissioned trail into the next riparian section, here where the beaver truly held dominion. Caging the young plants against gnashing teeth, and managing the appearance of beaver construction projects along the stream would be critical at this site. Starting in 2018, work began on what would later be called McKay Marsh, though more often it is simply the pond. Riparian areas around the pond were cleared of invasives and replanted with the help of volunteers. One event in particular, World Wetlands Day, received significant community support both from people and businesses and was key in achieving a restored wetland. In addition to the myriad of invasive plant species that also plagued the other sites, the pond had become entirely strangled out by yellow flag iris, a pernicious invasive plant that grows in wetted areas. For this particular weed, an excavator would be required to turn over the sizable root masses. However, this would create problems of its own, as maneuvering an excavator around a marsh is no small task. Swamp paths, a kind of sturdy platform, were skillfully employed here to defy this treacherous terrain. Thanks to an effective excavation, the pond was now significantly deeper than before. A marsh that in the summer could dry completely now featured water year-round, and enough perching spots for all of its winged inhabitants. The invasive iris and grasses, now largely overturned or sunken in the deep water left in their absence, would need to be suppressed to give the newly arrived native species a chance to gain a foothold. Dense burlap and stakes of willow, which can easily be planted on shores or slopes where conventional plants cannot, were employed to occupy the space around the pond and act as a vanguard against returning weeds. Over the past seven years, McKay Creek has undergone an incredible transformation. A habitat that was once significantly degraded by nearly a century of human activity and neglect is now on a positive trajectory. This is not just a story about plants and animals coming back to a stream. It's a story of the resiliency of nature, and a reminder that it's never too late for us to change our path. Now this urban stream stands as an example of both the value of ecological restoration and the power of community to heal natural spaces and be healed by them. <laughs>